This is the 2022 Harley-Davidson Sportster S. This year's Sportster is powered by the Revolution Max 1250T engine, weighs in at 507 pounds with a full 3.1 gallon tank, has a seat height of 28.9 inches, and retails for $15,000. Featuring a liquid-cooled engine, bristling with electronics, and sporting a muscular makeover, the new Sportster S is arguably a big departure from its predecessor. Gone are the days of simplicity, or affordability for that matter, as the new Sporty has a $5,000 increase over the old generation model. Now the hordes of Harley Paris may be a bit put off by this new development, but there might be a whole new generation of Sporty lovers just waiting in the wings. The Sportster has been a staple for the Milwaukee brand, steeped in tradition and often seen as the affordable starter bike for those riders wanting to join the hog club. Because of its simplicity and price tag, the Sportster has been considered the most versatile model in the Harley lineup. The good old Sporty has been chopped up, taken off-road, raced at flat track, toured across the nation, and practically done everything under the sun by its rabid fan base. The Sportster S, however, is a complete redesign. The riding position on the Sportster S is stretched out, featuring forward controls and an aggressive slouch to the handlebars. Personally, I am not a fan of the stock forward controls. Not being able to manage my body weight through the foot pegs means I have less control over the bike and less ability to aid the rear suspension. And with only 1.5 inches of travel, it needs all the help it can get. For a shorter rider like me at five foot four, the distance to both the handlebar and the pegs is a little bit of an issue. You know, I get sore shoulder blades from the stretch to the handlebar, and then also with the forward controls, it starts to feel like a, a pulled hamstring effect. Thankfully, Harley does offer mid controls, and they are a big game changer for shorter riders. I had an instant boost in handling capability, and the overall comfort of the Sportster is dramatically improved. No more pulled hamstrings, and even the seat sores were gone once I had a more neutral position in the saddle. Taller riders be warned, though. Most of my bigger colleagues complained that the mid-controls make the Sportster feel small and cramped. Plus, the mid-control kit will set you back another $659. Either way, your time's going to be short in the Sportster S as a 3.1 gallon tank has a bit of a limited range. The Sportster's going to pick up some merits though for an approachable seat height, adjustable levers, and an easy to use dash interface. When it comes to electronics, Harley has fully loaded the Sportster S with all the riding aids you'd expect of a cutting edge motorcycle. Three different engine modes, wheelie control, stoppy control, cornering ABS, and traction control all come standard, but what really stands out is the ease of use and connectivity offered. I had my phone and Bluetooth headset paired with the Sportster in record time. Being able to control navigation, music, and more straight from the handlebars really elevated the ride. There are a few hiccups, like you can't use Google Maps over the HD navigation in the Harley app, but so far, this is one of the most intuitive electronic systems I've seen on the market. All right, so the bike has a ton of fancy electronics on it, and Harley-Davidson even designates the Sportster S as a sport motorcycle on their website. But just how sporty is the Sportster S, really? Well, this model makes a big leap from the last generation with adjustable suspension by Showa in the front and rear, most notably a 43 millimeter inverted fork. It also has an all-new Brembo braking system with a four-piston caliper and 320mm disc up front. And when it comes to the motor, the Revolution Max 1250 brings a lot of excitement. Harley claims 120 horsepower and 94 foot-pounds of torque. So on paper, this does sound like a pretty darn sporty bike. But in reality, there are a few problems. The stretched out bike geometry, riding position, short suspension travel, and balloon front tire all have a negative effect on the cornering capabilities of the sports dress. When tackling some curvy roads, the initial turn-in on this bike is slow and cumbersome, mostly due to the oversized 160 front tire. Once committed to a turn, the stiff suspension and riding position are not particularly forgiving. Even the smallest bumps on the road really upset the chassis and disrupt the flow through the corner. And while the Brembo brakes are a step in the right direction, there isn't a reassuring bite to this single disc setup. And even with a strong pull on the lever, the sporty coasts rather than screeches to a stop. Listen, all these changes are for sure a big step up from the old generation Sportster. 
but at the end of the day, there is no question that this is still a cruiser. I can't help but feel that the Sports Duress is a little bit of a rolling contradiction. The Revolution Max engine is just incredible. It launches off the line with some serious aggression. And even in higher gears and higher RPM, that power is still on tap. But the rest of the bike only hinders its performance. And so I'm left with all the what ifs. You know, what if the Sportster S was housed in a different chassis? What if it had a more neutral riding position and some suspension with a bit more travel to it? What if it had a more reasonable front tire and dual discs instead of one? Basically, what if Harley Davidson actually made that Bronx concept unveil a couple years back? Yeah, that one. An American-made, lean, mean, street fighting machine. I only have photos, but that looks like a chassis ready to harness all those extra ponies. But evolution is not a rapid process. And the Bar and Shield brand is definitely going through an evolution. The Pan America was a huge stride. And now here with the Sportster S, it is a smaller but still significant transition from cruiser to sport cruiser. Once considered one of the most archaic bikes in the lineup, the Sportster S is now a new standard in power, performance, and connectivity for Harley. And for those of you who can't let go of nostalgia, never fear, the old generation Sportster is still available as the 2022 48 and Iron 883 models. So what comes next? I guess we'll have to wait and see what the next mutation will bring. Thanks for tuning in for my test ride on board the Harley Davidson Sportster S. If you want to read more about the Sportster, head on over to Common Tread to see my full write-up and drop a comment below if you have more questions. Thanks for watching. I'm Gemma Revzilla. Keep it on too.